Hey, what's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music again, hanging out with the gear master, Philip McKnight. You got to check out his channel, link below if you haven't yet. Philip, you are a guitar player and a bass player, but your background, you more, played more bass. Absolutely. Recently, I did a couple of just like beginner bass lessons, but a lot of feedback was teach how to slap. Teach sure. how to slap the bass. So people were asking, they ask a lot, and uh, we've been collaborating on some really fun gear videos. Since you are a bass player, you can teach me okay. uh, the basics of slapping. The first thing about slap bass that I think confuses people is that visually it is much different than what's happening physically. I learned an analogy that has served me well. When you're bouncing a basketball, you don't smash the ball into the ground. Right? You just tap the ball down. The ball's mm -hmm. all the inertia, all the, the ball does all the work, right? You just yep. push the ball towards the ground, it comes back, and all you're doing is just lightly bouncing that ball, right? The reason I say it that way is because what I want you to kind of just watch now that I'm gonna show it this way, is when I take my thumb, what you think is hitting the string is really just starting the momentum of the string. So watch, right? And here's the way I learned to illustrate it with my pinky. Sounded the same. The same, the same. Yeah. Because essentially I put no effort into this. In okay. fact, as soon as I touch the string, just like the ball, as soon as you touch it, you get away from it. Okay. Right? A great first thing to do if you if you really want to learn slap bass and be good at it, <laughs> which is a trick. That's don't different category. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about the snapping. That stuff yet. Worry about the Larry Graham where, where it all started, the thumb, right? Just get the, the groove going. And you could just pick your favorite scale, maybe a pentatonic uh -huh. or something like that. And just, instead of plucking, now does okay. that kind of make sense? Yeah. Only thing I want to do before I hand you the bases, okay. in that analogy, I want you to also visualize that as the strings get uh, smaller, it's more like a tennis ball. It's gonna get a little harder to control. Does it make sense? Yes. So so you, you actually have to hit a little differently. And then the last tip before I hand the bass is you wanna do it right about over the fretboard. That's where you wanna oh, hit it, right? Gotcha. You can hit it here, but you'll get a more tighter control okay. with uh, over the fretboard, just right over the fretboard. But there's no wrong place anywhere in here. Yeah. But this is probably a good place to start. And then just, and you probably will pick this up quickly too. Just mute it with this hand, you know what I mean? Or stop it when you're done. Mute it with the left hand? Yeah. I think for the average player, the lighter touch is gonna be the more. See, already kind of see how you're hitting really hard. Now start lightening up. Just start visualizing the bounce of the string. Oh, so it's, it's really about not keeping it down. Yeah, yeah, just as soon as you touch that string, you're done. See, how automatically. Not hitting it too hard. No, because see, remember now, now technically I said small strings, but also higher notes. And when you do this note, notice you're gonna have to give it a little bit more of an attack because I'll change to E. Right, that works, see? So a good starting point then, like step one, is to just get more, I mean, that's the most I've ever done that in my life. Right. <laughs> I've not ever done that. It actually that sounded was, pretty good. Okay, I was like, then, you're doing, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was doing I, good. Well, yeah, I, and you're, that's good teacher etiquette of you, good uh, bedside manner. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I went back down there. That's so okay, I, if you find a sweet, if you find a spot that feels more magic to you, hit that. And did you notice when it got when you went higher up, you were hitting just a little harder? Yeah. That's what I mean by like changing the way it, it, it is. On certain strings, you're gonna hit lighter, and then mm -hmm. you're gonna hit harder, and you get intuitive, just like with the bouncing, uh, like different kinds of yep. balls. Yeah. You would approach it differently. That's where it tricks people because if you try one one physical way of doing it all the way yeah. across, it won't work. I'm gonna give it back to you real quick. Okay. There's also what is it? Slap and pop. Yep. Pop is the pulling. Yep, most bass players are gonna follow just playing the octave. So uh, G, snap that G, right? And E, 
You know what I mean? Okay. Snapped it. So, so the reason is, is the, the way you're going to think of this is like a drummer. Mm -hmm. This is the bass drum. This is the snare, right? Mm -hmm. So it's... Right? And you're using your index Yeah, and finger. I'm going to show you the snap now. So in that one, very simple, E would be a great, good one. Okay. You're going to... And then notice the trick with the... Once you add the snap, this is where the trick comes in. If you really what you're to watch is my left hand, because what happens is as soon as I hit that note, I muted it with my thumb. I don't care what you mute it with. You can even use the side of your arm. Okay. You have to mute that to do the snap, because otherwise it's going to go... See, and it's just... They're oh ringing. Yeah. yeah. To get it... You got to get the mute. So it's going to be open, mute, and then th you're plucking it. You're just plucking it with a finger. So snap it straight up. Now, when I've just seen someone else do it and then tried to do it, there's always a delay in me hitting and then popping. Like yeah. my hand and isn't used to it. Problem is with bass is bass is definitely more a rhythm instrument than than a guitar. And in, in the idea that if you're not in time with the drummer, things fall apart very quickly. Mm -hmm. So you have to have timing right. You have to, everything has to be in that time. So when you practice this, you will practice like I'm showing you just not continually, one time only. And then when you got that down, then you can move around, but you have to, you have to, because think about this, in this, to, for this to be right, that pattern I just played, every time the drummer would be in sync with me. This would be his bass drum every time. So it would be Right? Yeah. So we have to be in time. So the reason I tell you that it's a cautionary thing, if you, uh, every instrument's the same in this way, but if you pick up a bad habit now, it's not gonna serve you well. Yeah, right? yeah. In the snap, I would definitely just start with like E, and then give that a All right. shot, same, All right. same concept. Oh, and are you pointing up here from I, here? I kind of do it right, right there. Yeah. And then try just one time, one yeah. bounce, one bounce and a snap. There it is. Very boring, but perfect. Yeah, so. Yep. Because that mute. Yeah. Some of the mutes and on, on guitar, there's a lot of muting lot involved of muting. playing guitar. Yes. I talk about it, I break it down, but then I also say sometimes you just have to forget about it. It'll evolve and you'll eventually start figuring out that you don't like that ringing out and you will slowly begin to mute it. I, I absolutely agree. So. Cut to 10,000 hours yeah. later, and I'm... I'm going to practice. Can you just give us one more slap session sure. so we feel good about ourselves? Sure. And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll call it a, a day. probably the most focused I've been on and closest right. I've been to it. Right. I should really watch the right hand. I mean, I, the left hand, it's like, yeah, octaves, pentatonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 yeah, da. yeah all the patterns. Like, are... I can see that as a guitar player musician, but it's really yeah. doing it nice and slow and just building it up and just getting those reps in. How I learned to do it was I actually would shove foam or anything I could find, you know, uh, Toilet paper, even in shove. your ears. No, so yeah, in my ears. <laughs> I would shove it underneath the string somewhere on here. Yeah, and I would just sit there while everybody was watching TV and just. Yeah, it, which, which of course works, no man. volume on. The, yeah, and I would just. And I would do this. I would do it so much that the people around me would just they would tune it out. I, they totally, wouldn't even know I was yeah, doing it. Yeah. I would just do that. So yeah, that's how you do it. Want to thank you again, Philip McKnight. You've got an awesome channel. Thank you. And so do you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for coming down and being being here and being on it. You guys, we got a link for Philip's channel uh, in the info box below. And if you like us doing these kinds of uh, videos together, let us know in the comments. You know, support Philip, and hopefully we'll see you one of these days real soon. Maybe even at the NAMM show or Absolutely. something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks again, you guys, and thank you, Philip. Mm -hmm.